as the saying goes, it's Bristol, baby, so let's go! Alex Bowman continues his amazing playoffs run. He has been stoic in the face of criticism, and the Hendrick man leads this race early. Christopher Bell up on that higher line and tucks back in behind William Byron. Martin Truex Jr. Fellas, this is a must-do, must-win, must-have-a-great-result night. You see how aggressive he is. He saw a hole he could drive into to keep from getting blocked on the outside. He immediately took it from William, William Byron. Caution is out. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Yellow's out. John Hunter Nemechek, he was having issues down the back straightaway. Looks like a left rear tire may be low. He got really loose. Ended up spinning out. And look at that. Yeah, look at that right rear. He got he had trouble off of two. He had trouble off of two, and then ultimately whatever happened to the car spun contact. Pretty significant contact too. Right there, it looks like all the tires are still inflated. I was trying to see if that right rear might have gone down beforehand. Oh, right there. What do we got there? A little contact. Hard to tell what. Oh, man, he's still chasing it, isn't he, Jeff? Yeah, they, they got stacked up. I think he got really high in one and two and got up against the wall and, and you know, maybe cut a tire, maybe damaged the right rear toe link, something. We're getting ready for the restart. Lights are out on the pace car as it ducks down. Back down onto the apron. Let's get this thing going again after an early caution caused by John Hunter Nemechek. It's Hendrick Motorsports up the front. Martin Truex Jr. takes the fight to Kyle Larson. Back in, pops out three wide, about five rows back. Gets back in line, gets organized. There's the 77 on the low side. Carson Hosovar, the 21-year-old, following on from his top three result last weekend at Watkins Glen in the Spire Motorsports Chevy. Unreal. Qualified on the front row at Darlington, and here he is running at the front of the field, Jeff, in Bristol. Awesome. But Larson is only 26 above coming into this race. He has not had the smoothest playoffs as well, so these 10 playoff points will definitely be a little bit of insurance. No guarantees, but a little pressure off Cliff Daniels, Kyle Larson, and the five team. Half a mile to go, less than that, until the end of stage one. And this will be the 11th stage win this year for the five of Kyle Larson. That was convincing. That was a statement. His teammate Alex Bowman follows him across Christopher Bell. That was a really solid first stage as well to everybody who has entered that already. Now, while we're away, got the news from race control. There's been a penalty handed to Joe Gibbs Racing's Ty Gibbs. He had a really solid opening stage, but this is going to hurt the playoff driver. Let's go, stage two. On the inside in that bright yellow and black, number 20, Christopher Bell puts the pressure to Kyle Larson. Alex Bowman, Martin Truex Jr. That light blue and white car. We haven't spoken much about William Byron. Been a source of frustration for Byron that he's never led laps here, never had a pole, never won. He said, I'd love one of those dominant cars, Jeff, at Bristol, where I could be the guy up the front. Yeah, it's so much more fun when you're out front rather than being in this mess. A little contact on Wallace. We haven't really spoken a lot about Bubba. He, too, was in the top ten pretty much all of stage one. As we take you back to something that just transpired, watch that black car high up. 54 in heavy traffic. It's squeezed right here between oh. two cars. Remember, the penalty for the 54 was tail end of the field. He had to line up behind the lap, down cars as well. And this is what happens. I mean, look at the craziness, beating and banging. And why? Because you said it. Larson is coming. Larson's four cars behind him. But there's a caution out. Oh. Caution is out. And the man who locked himself in at Atlanta Motor Speedway, Joey Logano. Maybe a flat. Should we get a flat? What caused this? Some damage to the nose, but not super severe. We'll see if he can get around without more damage because of the flat tire. He's running 12th. Started 22nd, up to 12th. Oh, contact there. Can't tell from that angle whether 
there's contact from behind or I still can't really tell. Either way, he gets just kind of spit out of line. Yeah, I think that was the slow car of Josh Balicki in the top lane. And Ryan Priest was in there. So, so how, how bad is this race car, Steve? It's really hard to tell. Obviously, tires are flat. I feel like we haven't really spoken much about Reddick tonight. He started in 15th and a strategy play there as we go back to racing with just a few laps to go, two laps to go here at Bristol Motor Speedway in the second stage. And look at the effect of those new tires. I'm shocked. I thought it would fire off quicker than that, but easily the 19 goes by. Now the 45 up the hill tries to shut the lane off for the 20. I think he has a chance. He has a half a lap now to just kind of almost stay side by side with the 11. Jeff is the goal. Not allow a third lane for Christopher Bell out front. Larson's going to win the stage. Stage one and stage two for Kyle Larson. No worries there. And how did it work out for Tyler Reddick? Comes in behind one of his team owners in fourth place. Check this out. Chase Briscoe in the middle of Ryan. Uh, Martin Truex and Denny Hamlin. That's got the attention of James Small. Look at the eyes wide open of the crew chief of the 19. Well, look at the points. Look what happens. Truex is only two points to the good. They go, both get by and watch what happens. Chase Elliott has a front row seat. He's trying to figure out which line to follow. I always vote top. I like the top line. I think it has the momentum. You have the least amount of risk. Chase Briscoe and the courage of conviction. He said, Forget whether I just won Darlington and I got in and you counted me out. I'm not the underdog. I can win this thing. I feel like Denny Hamlin, he was in the middle of that. I feel like he didn't want any parts of that. Yeah. You know, he looked like he backed up to me, just did not want to be in the situation where he was three wide. And he's going to potentially give that spot up to Chase Elliott because of it. Elliott runs high. Look at this. So while Kyle Larson is more than three seconds out in the lead, second, third, fourth, and fifth are all together. Throw in sixth place, Ryan Blaney as well. Caution. Caution, caution. Got one up, sir. Caution is out, and it's the seven of Corey LaJoy. Having such a good night. He was running at 11th, qualified in the top 10. It might be right front throw, Lee. This is his final drive for Spire Motorsports before transitioning to Rick Ware Racing for next week's race in Kansas. Let's show you how it went down for LaJoy. Kind of in the middle there. Oh, man. Josh Berry. Contact with Josh Berry. From that angle, it's hard to tell. I mean, definite contact, but I can't really tell. It's late in the corner to know who's climbing, who's going. I'm sure there's way more to it than that. Probably starts even earlier. Here we're going to see it. He gets loose. Yep. He gets loose and loses momentum. See right there, he's loose. And then I think he gets slow, and Josh Berry just doesn't get slowed up and gets into the back of him. Sorry, guys. As we welcome you back to Bristol, if you are a Martin Truex Jr. fan and this Bass Pro Shops Toyota, we don't have good news for you. He just apologized to his team on the radio. He got caught speeding on pit road. The night was going so well. One of the big headline stories was, can Denny Hamlin win three here at Bristol in a row? Can Denny Hamlin drive his way into the round of 12? Larson gets a terrific restart. Here comes his teammate Chase Elliott in the red car around the outside. Elliott has been spectacular tonight and just sneaking his way forward through the top 10. There goes Bubba Wallace right around Denny Hamlin as well. Christopher Bell lining up. Ryan Blaney in the mix too. Whoa, look at this. This started on the back straightaway. Suarez is angry. Suarez and Eric Jones. Suarez isn't out of this. He needs to be. What the hell was that all about? Watch this. This happened on the back straightaway. Eric Jones just comes across the nose of Suarez, and Suarez is mad. I'm not real sure how he didn't spin him out there. He was trying pretty hard. Daniel's trying to stay alive in the playoffs, and he is 
walking a really delicate line right now. There's some big numbers being racked up here tonight under the lights at Bristol. 10 to go from here. 10 to go and your physical fitness is at a test. 41 minutes of green flag racing. 41 minutes of 16 second laps. Basically four seconds on the straightaway and you're into the high banks again. Vertical loading. Jeff, I know these drivers are fit and the seats are custom made. The headrests are there. But this has to be a mental and physical challenge as the 54 Whoa. is shoving the 43 out of the way. He had that huge crash at Atlanta Motor Speedway to begin the playoffs. It wasn't a great Watkins Glen either. And just recently on the radio, he said to Cliff Daniels, I'm trying to get to the white flag as quickly as I can. Well, that white flag has come. And Kyle Larson is on his way home. It has been a stellar first-class performance under the lights in Bristol. Kyle Larson is the man. Cliff Daniels says, there you go, you took care of business. And we give you the updated playoff standings. Yeah, there, now there are 12. 16 entered, 12 survive. Austin Cindric, a great first round. He's going to need a repeat performance, much like Alex Bowman. Those two below the cut line, as well as Daniel Suarez and Chase Briscoe.